today it's budgetary planning. How we build the budget, how we plan the budget. A budget is one of the most important management planning and control tools that we have. In this part we're going to look at the planning side of budget. In the next video it will be the control side of budget. Um, let me just see if I can change the slide here. Budget. A budget is a formal written statement of management's plans for the upcoming year. And it's a way that managers can agree upon and communicate among themselves on how to achieve the objectives of a company. It promotes efficiencies. If as a manager you know what the other managers are doing, you won't be duplicating the same efforts. So it's also that, and a control in place. Now, the way we begin to develop the budget is we look at what has happened in the past. Uh, we look at the historical data, the income statements, the costs, the expenses. And then we uh, put in place what management's goals are for the future. And we do this in financial terms. And this involves all managers within the firm. The benefits here, it forces management to plan ahead and to formalize and write down their goals and objectives. Once managements have done that, then they sort of own that goal or objective. They said, I'm going to achieve this, and then they're motivated to do that. It helps, the budget helps you to, to, to set definite objectives. And it's also a, an early warning signal if uh, something goes wrong. The benefits of budgeting, it facilitates coordination of activities, a greater um, management awareness, and as I said before, it motivates management. One thing to remember about budgeting, that is a budget is an aid, a tool to management. It's not a substitute for management. That is to say, you as manager, use a budget to help promote more efficient operations. If somebody approaches you with a new idea, uh, you can look into how you would incorporate that in a budget. You know a bad manager when a manager says no to anything because it was never in the budget. The budget period, the length of the budget period. Now when we're talking about budgets, there are basically two types of budgets. There's the one-year budget, that's the operating budget. Now that one year budget can be broken down into months or uh, quarters. And what we do is that on that 12 month budget is we uh, set the goals for each month and uh, keeps management planning for a whole year in advance. Now the budgeting process is such that you base budgets on past performance. You then collect data from organizational units and you develop within the framework of the sales forecast. The sales forecast is the most important. The sales from the sales forecast, everything else flows. The production manager will produce to meet the sales forecast. Other managers will then adjust their uh, activity level to meet the sales forecast. When developing the sales forecast, there's many factors to consider, first of all. You look at what you did last year. You consider what the economic conditions are this year. Are there any new trends in the industry? Um, you look at price changes. You determine what you think you're going to do in advertising and what the results of that will be. And this is where your market research studies come in. That's why market research is such an important part of business. Because if we can anticipate more accurately what sales activity we will have in the future, then we will be operating more efficiently. The budgeting process, um, if we're in a small company, it's basically few managers, it's um, very informal. But in large companies, in government organizations, and uh, big, uh, big companies, especially multinational companies, what is formed is a budget committee. And that budget committee would have the senior management of that organization and they would review what all the other managers are doing and they would approve or disapprove of those goals and objectives. Now the thing is, the best way to do the budgeting is what's called from the bottom up. That is, have the person closest to the customer in the field, if you will, at the retail level, helping develop what the sales forecast would be. And 
pass that on up. Now, a poor budgeting process is top down. That is, senior management sets the goals, and everybody else has to work to achieve those goals. The benefit of being bottom up is that the person who says, okay, this is my budget for the coming year, as I said before, basically owns that budget and is motivated to achieve or even exceed that budget. The advantages of this approach is that we get more accurate budget estimates because the lower managers are closer to the customer, they have more detailed knowledge. And it's fair. It, it's it, they're involving the lower management in the in the whole process. The overall goal here is to produce a budget that is considered to be fair and achievable by managers while still meeting corporate goals. Unreliable budgets greater than they are is the risk for top-down management. The disadvantage of participative budgeting, that is budgeting that involves everybody, is that it is time-consuming and costly. And also, if you have more people involved uh, making estimates, they may put in a little buffer, what we call slack. We th they think they can do 10, they're going to say 9. They're going to make it look uh, that they have been done better than budget. So that's one of the disadvantages. But the budget committee is always looking for that. So in participative budgeting, it starts down at the departmental level. Then it moves up to the plant level, plant manager. Then from that to the vice president, up to the president. So now when we talked about time period before, I was talking about what we're concerned in this chapter is the operational budget, which is one year. There are other budgets which are called capital budgets. That is, uh, they are putting aside money to build a plant or m move into a different market three to five years down the road. Now, that type of planning is done by senior managing. Um, so that you may be involved in in, in years to come. But right now, you have to focus on the operating budget. The emphasis here is specific short-term goals. The long-range planning, of course, five years, that's more senior management. Now, what we are talking about is called the master budget. It is the combination of all operating budgets and, as well, a financial budget which involves just the uh, cash budget. We're not going to talk about capital expenditure budget. We're not going to talk about the budgeted balance sheet. So we're going to talk about the operating budgets and the cash budget. Here is the master budget. As I said, it starts with the sales forecast at the top. They do an accurate sales forecast. Based on that, the production manager then will take the sales forecast and determine how much has to be produced to meet the sales forecast. From that, the purchasing manager will determine how much he has to purchase and when he has to purchase to meet the production uh, schedule. The production manager again will determine how much he needs in direct labor to meet the production schedule. The accountant here will develop, okay, what's the variable overhead to meet that production level? What will be the fixed? And so you see this is the cost of goods sold. So we have sales minus the cost of goods sold gives you the gross profit. From gross profit, well, we have the marketing, the selling, and administration expense budget. Now, we'll talk more in detail on each of these budgets. But I just want to show you that what we end up with is a budget and income statement. Sales minus the cost of goods sold gives me gross profit. Minus selling and admin gives me a budget and income statement. This is a forecast and income statement. This is what's called a pro forma income statement. Now from there, we have to make sure we have the cash available to pay for the materials and the labor and the overhead costs to selling that in. So a very important budget is the cash budget. So this is what we're responsible for. Sales, production, direct material, direct labor. Uh, we'll go over manufacturing overhead budget and we'll go over the selling and in budget. But what's very important here is the cash budget. Now, the sales budget itself is very easy to, uh, to put together. It's simply the expected unit sales volume for each product times the selling price. So here you have the sales budget. Expected unit sales, quarter one, 3000 Unit selling price, $60, $180,000. Uh, 
quarter two, quarter three, quarter four. A rather simple, straightforward budget will not be on the exam. This, though, would be, could be. This is your production budget. This shows the units that must be produced to meet the anticipated sales. However, there's one other thing here. Management, because we're talking about finished goods, management will state that they will want a certain percentage in ending inventory at the end of each month or each quarter, whatever we're doing, to meet the sales for the next quarter. What they want is a buffer in inventory in case the sales are high or low. The ending inventory will control that buffer. So somewhere in any of these uh, problems that we're going to do, we look at what the desired ending inventory has to be. And therefore, when we determine what the production, required production in units are, that's going to be the budgeted sales in units plus the desired ending inventory minus the beginning inventory. And that equals the required production units. Here's an example. We have Hayes Corporation. The management believes the future sales needs, they need an ending inventory of 20% of next quarter sales. So therefore, in their production budget, they have the expected sales, first quarter, 3,000, 3,500, 4,000, 4,500. Now the desired ending inventory has to be 20% of next quarter's sales. So you see the next quarter sales is 3,500. 20% of that is 700. So therefore, in quarter one, we need enough for sales, 3,000, plus 700 to meet next quarter's sales, which is 3,700. But because management policy has been consistent from year to year, when we ended up the year uh, 2006, we would have ended up with 20% of what we need the first quarter of 2007, which is 600. So again, but the production manager needs 3,000 for sales, 700 to meet ending inventory. But he doesn't have to produce 3,700 because he has 600 already on hand. So his production for the first quarter will be 3,100. In the second quarter, the sales say 3,500. Okay, we need 20% of next quarter sales, 4,000. So in total, we need 4,300. Uh, but we already have 700 from the end of first quarter. Beginning inventory, or the uh, ending inventory in quarter one is the beginning inventory in quarter two. So we need 3,600 and so on. In the fourth quarter, you must know what you're going to need for the first quarter of the following year. And um, they tell us that the first quarter of the following year is going to be 5,000, so 20% of 5,000 is 1,000. So there you have the production budget. Now, in similar fashion, we do the same thing with the direct materials budget. The purchasing agent now, or the purchasing manager, must determine how much he needs to purchase. Now, they, again, management's policy regarding inventory will be stated somewhere in a problem. It's not necessarily the same percentage as would be the finished goods inventory. So every problem will be different. Here, too, you're dealing with quantity and costs. And again, you have to, what your needs are required for production, plus what you need for ending finished goods, minus what you already have in beginning finished goods, is what is required to be purchased each month. Again, an example. Well, first of all, they say that the ending inventory has to be 10% of next quarter's production requirements. And they said to manufacture this product requires two pounds of raw material at $4 per pound. Now, it would be advisable here, I know your textbook does it differently, but this uh, slide does it better, I believe. It's advisable to deal in units all the way down to the bottom and then simply multiply through by the cost per pound. For example, we go back to the production budget. Recall that we need 3,100 units to be produced in quarter one. They told us that it takes two pounds of material to produce each unit. Therefore, we need 6,200 pounds. Now, in the second quarter, we need units to be produced 3,600. And 
the, that's from the production budget. And we need two pounds for each unit, so we need 7,200. Now back to quarter one. So I need to purchase, I need 6,200 to meet the production budget, plus I need 10% of what I need next quarter. So you can see 10% of 7,200 is 720. Those two together means that I need 6,920 in total pounds. But I already have beginning inventory, which would have been 10% of 6,200. And so therefore my needs is 6,300. Then I multiply through by the dollars, which gives me 25,200. Second quarter, again, I need 10% of the third quarter, so I have to figure out what I need in the third quarter. Uh, but I have the ending inventory at quarter, or quarter one is the beginning inventory at quarter two. Therefore, in quarter two, I need 7,300 times four, and so on. And that is the direct material budget. Now, those two budgets, production budget, direct material budget, are a little more involved than the other budgets. That's why they're fair game for the exam. The direct labor budget is rather simple. We just look at what we need, uh, how many hours does it take to produce one unit. We go to the production budget, units to be produced times the, the time to produce one unit times the cost. And there you have it. units to be produced times two hours gives me 6,200 hours I need at $10, 62000 The manufacturing overhead budget, um, that will be done mostly by the accountants. They would say, okay, what's the variable cost of overhead? And they multiply that through by the number of units uh, times the direct labor hour. And they develop the manufacturing overhead budget in terms of uh, variable cost and fixed cost. The variable cost is based on the number of direct labor hours. The number of direct labor hours is based on the number of units we're going to produce. The number of units we're going to produce is based on the sales. So you see, it all goes together. And the operating budget, this is the marketing people, general and min, uh, expected variable cost per unit, sales commission, freight out, and so on. And they develop that with variable and fixed cost as well. And there we have the budget and income statement. We take the sales budget, uh, the production budget, and material, labor, and overhead budget is your cost of goods sold, selling, and expense, and we come up with the budget and income statement. Okay. To find the cost of goods sold, we simply use the direct materials. We look at the direct material budget, and we get the top. direct labor. We look at the labor budget, manufacturing, and overhead, so we have a budgeted cost per unit of $44, and we're going to sell 15,000 units, therefore it costs to get sold $6,600. Right, and from that, we develop our budgeted income statement. In the next year, we think we're going to come in with net income of around $47,900. Now, moving on, probably the most important budget is the cash budget. We have to anticipate what our cash flows are going to be. Because you see, a business can go bankrupt. A profitable business can go bankrupt if they don't have the cash to pay the bills when they come due. You have to pay the direct labor on a weekly or monthly basis. You have to pay for the materials that you purchase. You have to pay the variable overhead. And where do you get all that? You get that from sales. You must collect sales. So the cash budget is basically in three parts. Cash coming in, which we call cash receipts. Cash going out, which we call cash disbursements. And if we need to borrow, then we have a section of the cash budget that indicates how much we borrow and when we have to pay it back. The basic format, beginning cash balance, add cash receipts, gives me the total cash available, then you subtract the cash disbursements and you look at the excess of cash receipts over cash disbursements or the deficit. That is, the cash disbursements are greater than the cash receipts. And then you look at financing and ending cash balance. So therefore, you see the cash budget includes the cash you receive from sales and the cash you get from credit sales. Now, when you give uh, customers time to pay, some will pay cash and then others will take a month to pay you. Okay. 
So therefore, in any one month, you're going to get cash sales that month, plus credit sales possibly from the month before. Same with cash disbursements. We, when we borrow or when we buy from our supplier, we are allowed time to pay. So the timing of when the cash goes out, timing the cash comes in is so important in developing the cash budget. So we, to do this, you prepare it in sequence. You go one month or one quarter all the way down, and then you start the next quarter, because you need the cash balance at the end of the first quarter to start the second quarter. Okay. For example, here we go. We're starting January 1st with a cash balance of 38000 We sell. We collect 60% of sales, so there are no cash sales here. Everybody's on credit. We collect 60% in the first quarter sold and 40% in the next quarter. We collect 60,000 in accounts receivable, which is at the end of December 31st, 2006, and we collect that in quarter one. We're going to invest 2,000 in quarter two. Direct materials, we pay 50% in the quarter in which we purchase the materials, 50% in the next quarter. We also have, at the end of the year, 10,600 in accounts payable, which we have to pay in quarter one. Direct labor, you got to pay those boys every quarter that they worked in. They're not going to allow you to pay them months later. Manufacturing overhead and selling them in expenses, you pay in the quarter in which they're incurred. We're thinking of buying a truck in quarter two. And uh, we pay back the loan in the earliest quarter with sufficient cash. Now here, again, um, is management's policy with regards to the cash budget, just like we had inventory. Management says you cannot go below 15000 minimum. You must keep that as a required balance. All right. So, looking at our schedule of collections. The accounts receivable 60000 in quarter one. In the first quarter, the sales are 180000 Therefore, oops, therefore, we're going to collect, what was it, 60% of that in quarter one and 40% of that in quarter two. Now, in the second quarter, uh, we have sales of 210,000, so we're going to collect 72,000 of that, plus um, that's 40% of. Wait a minute now, what am I thinking? Second quarter is we need 60% of 210, which is 126. Going back to the first quarter, um, of the 180, we're going to collect 60% in the first quarter, which is 108 and 72 in the second quarter. In the second quarter, the sales are 210. We're going to collect 126 in the second quarter and 84 in the third quarter. In the third quarter, 240, we're going to collect 144 in the third quarter and 96 in the fourth quarter. And in the fourth quarter, we're going to get 60% of 270, which is 162. So, um, in the accounts payable, same thing, we pay 50% in one month, sec uh, one quarter, 50% in the second quarter. First quarter, our purchases is $25,200. We're going to pay twelve six in the first quarter, twelve six in the second quarter. Second quarter, our cash disbursements for direct materials is going to be $29,200. So we're going to pay fourteen six in the second quarter, fourteen six in the third quarter and so on. So here's your cash budget. Um, if I could make it a little uh, oh. uh, a little bit anyway. I'll make it a little bit bigger. There we go. Beginning cash balance thirty eight thousand. Collection from customers. Sale uh, hundred and sixty eight thousand. We're gonna sell some securities first quarter so incomes uh, 170,000. So with the 38 plus the 170, we have 208. Now, direct material purchases, 23,2. Direct labor from the labor budget, 62,000. Manufacturing overhead from the manufacturing overhead budget and from the selling and min budget. Income tax, we're not going to pay. Oh no, income tax is a truck, we're not going to purchase that month. Income tax is that. So we have 208 coming in, 182 going out. We have 25.5, five. 
So at the ending cash balance 25.5, we are over the 15,000 minimum required by management. So we start the second quarter, 25.5. Income's 198, so we have 223.500. Out goes 211, 500. So we only have 12,000 left. Recall we need to maintain 15,000 minimum balance. So we borrow 3,000 to bring it up to 15. Third quarter, we start off with 15, in comes 228, so we have 243, out goes 22500, we have 22500, we have more than the 15000, so we pay the bank manager back, 3000 plus 100 for interest, and they'll tell us what the interest is. We have 194, we start 194 off on the next quarter, and so on. So you see how important the cash budget is. It contributes to effective cash management. And we can identify when we need cash and what quarter we need cash before we actually get there. So we can go to the bank manager at the beginning of the year and say, we need to have available cash for the second quarter that we can pay you back in the third quarter. And that is the manager cash budgeting. And that concludes then this portion on budget planning. So you're going to be responsible for the cash budget, the production budget, uh, the purchasing budget, putting those budgets together, and responsible for any um, multiple choice questions on any of the other budgets. Okay.